All right, so we can cool here with the guys from Pardon the Scars. How you guys doing? Yeah, yeah. how you doing? Real good, man. So uh, congratulations on this new single, man. I was really pumped up to get a sneak peek. Thank you so much. So tell me a little bit about this track. <clears throat> well, um, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's kind of an age old uh, story, you know, the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, two sides of yourself, uh, kind of battling each other, You're trying to stay normal for the world around you, you got to go to work and all that stuff. But you just, you know, that, that anger inside sometimes wants to come out and, and play, You're trying to, you know, keep it at bay. So, <laughs> so life keeps going forward. I really, I really dug the song on it. I mean, for those that are listening right now, the track is called uh, Caged Inside, and it is amazing. You're going to get the premiere, right? Probably watch it before you watch this interview. So uh, you guys are in for a real treat. So I dig your sound, man. You guys kind of sound like uh, what I grew up listening to, you know? Well, I think we were kind of going for, you know, a uh, like a hard rock sound, but enough to also like kind of, catch a lot of people's attention to you know so like something that everybody can kind of gravitate towards and but also something that will get your head going you know with with a good message you know because sometimes if you can hear a good message with a song that you're just kind of jamming to you may you may absorb something without even really realizing it so you know um i think we, we we're we we're kind of going with with that a lot um as as we were kind of pressing through the song so I definitely dug it, man. Like I said, uh, it sounds almost like some 90s rock that I grew up uh, listening to there. It's about time to hear that kind of music swing back. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, thing I yeah. Do, that's... You guys, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we all have our own uh, <clears throat> separate influences, but uh, where they all align is is pretty much in that, you know, that, uh, that 90s, 2000s, just stuff that was killing it back then, you know? Uh, We're all 90s kids, you know, so. That's the one thing that's crazy about these Zoom meetings, man. I, I I can't see you guys in person. I can see little blips, so it's hard to tell when someone's ready to talk and when they're not. It's always a, <laughs> a fun little free-for-all there. Yeah, for sure. I'm uh, just anticipating the delays and stuff, so trying to talk when, <laughs> try not to talk over anyone. I'll raise my hand from now on. You know. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three of us. I mean, I can imagine yeah. if like 20 or something like that. That'd be wild. At least we're not doing a biology class or something, you know? <laughs> I was going to say, my kids and... Uh, He's in fourth grade. There's 75 kids in his class, so it's a it's a nightmare, you know. So, <laughs> everyone gets Everybody crazy. shuts up in class, you know. Like you just be quiet in class. So, <laughs> well, teacher yeah. has the option to mute you, so they go ahead and. Uh, yeah. But the best thing is you could definitely pretend. Oh, clap! My computer's cutting out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that was a joke. Like if you're in class with you. Right. <laughs> oh. Great idea. That's a good idea. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, mean, I, I definitely took the message, too, inside that song. It's like something that people need right now is a little uh, little something positive to get you through these crazy times that we're living in. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is a darkness, you know, that, you know, talking about the two sides of yourself, but it's the it's the better, you know, the better, more reasonable side trying to, you know, win it when win the day so you know it's it does have a positive message it's just trying to you know keep it together pretty much you know and right now yeah everything's crazy uh you know a lot of us ha have lost um you know the ability to do a lot of things we're, we're used to so that causes a lot of anxiety and, and stuff but <laughs> a lot of musicians and artists have lost their outlet altogether so it's not only a a, a fun thing that we go do it's also an outlet you know for us for our uh for all of our energy and, and, you know, a lot of people, not just livelihood and money, but what we do to make ourselves feel better. So, you know, it's kind of a, it's definitely a weird time. And I think it's a good time for, you know, a song kind of about duality to come out too. Um, especially during a pandemic, people are really, really changing up their lifestyles. Uh, people are kind of probably realizing some parts of themselves they weren't really aware of, you know, uh, prior to having to just be stuck in your house, you know, for a while or not being able to go see people. So there may be some individuals who are kind of going like, oh crap, I have anger issues. I have depression. I have all this stuff that I didn't know that I had. So, you know, when, uh, you know, it, I think it helps a lot to have 
the knowledge that somebody else might be feeling the same thing during this such isolated, you know, period. So if, if, you know, you hear a song and someone else is just kind of going, Hey, I'm struggling with some demons too. That probably could help some other people who are dealing with the same stuff. So I think this is a good time for a song, you know, like caged, um, to come out. Now, did you guys write this song post pandemic or did you guys write it during lockdown? I think it was, uh, it all came together right at the beginning. Um, February, March, April is when we did the, the lyric video. Um, so yeah, it, it was, we had something we had been jamming for a while, but then we really uh, grabbed it and, and started to, to mold it into to a song, you know, uh, right around that time. So right when everything was really, right when the sky started actually falling, because I think January you heard whispers of, you know, this, this disease and, the, and, and this stuff that was going around. But I think February, March is when the layoffs started happening. The bank started going tits up, like everything started to really go go crazy at that point. So I think that's when, uh, that's kind of when, yeah, so right at the beginning. I don't think it was necessarily driven by the pandemic, but it was, it did come together right at the beginning of it. Can we say tits up? Is that okay? <laughs> 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 now, uh, one thing I was wondering is, what is it like being in a band during these times? I mean, were you guys able to uh, record together? Or are you guys sending each other files and stuff like that? Or We, uh, you know, we were sending each other files. We were sending each other ideas, uh, but we were not able to get together. Um, I know a lot of bands around here were able to at least keep it, you know, it's four members in a band. You, can, you know, the CDC recommendations were 10. So we could have done that, but uh, my, uh, my fiance is actually a very immunocompromised and so um, we decided, you know, it was safer to just, you know, wait until we saw what happened and see what's going on. And uh, now that the vaccine started coming out, we actually took about a 10 month break. We recorded that song and basically just stopped. Um, we still stayed in contact, like I said, you know, you know, throwing ideas back and forth. Our, our, our messenger chat became like 10 miles long. Um, but, uh, in our drive, we've been, you know, storing stuff on a drive, our drummer will be like, Hey, check out this beat. And then I'll, you know, we've been kind of doing songs like that, like over the phone, <laughs> but, uh, what was it? Four or five weeks ago, we started getting back together. You know, we, I got a new place. So we had to put the jam room back together in a new spot and, and all that stuff. So it just started happening again. And we started rehearsing, uh, the song and we were like, there's no reason to go through the set list right now. Let's uh, take three of our, our three of our you know songs that we want to release and record you know let's get them practiced so we rehearsed for like four four weeks and just you know any ideas what would it sound better if we did this what would what would sound better if we did maybe we can change the ending or shorten this part so we just started throwing all the kitchen sink ideas at these three songs so now we're um, actually going to set up the microphones on the drum kit tonight and start recording drums for those tomorrow. So we have follow-up material. And uh, so that's kind of our focus right now is to get these other songs out. And then we ended up writing a song at the last rehearsal and uh, in between, you know, playing the three songs, getting them ready to record. We, uh, we have more than three, which is we, we focused on three. Let's get three recorded out the door. And then, uh, you know, got a new one, uh, a new, new one on the way. So that was fun. Now, how different is it now uh, putting out music when you don't have touring to back it? I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll find that one out, you know. <laughs> so. Well, what I'm saying is like, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure that, you know, whoever you're working with, the label and everything like that is, is trying to coach you a little bit instead of throwing everything out at once. It's better to have things in piecemeal, you know, like here's a. Well, yeah, you know, um, we in that 10 mile long, you know, chat thread that I was talking about, it's, we had discussed, you know, what are we going to do? What's, what's the move? We want to get, you know, five songs and release an EP. Do we want to do, you know, let's just record everything we've got and just get it out there and get it behind us and start writing. Cause that was our big thing is let's start writing. Right. But then some of us were like, well, we, let's go ahead and record what we've got. So when it's time to put something out, we're not standing back at, at base one, you know? So, um, but it's like, let's do three or four songs and, you know, stagger them out, release a song, release a song, release a song. And that way it'll burn a couple months, hopefully, until something happens. Um, 
And, and, you know, we just, we'd like to have a steady flow. If we burn out everything we've got in one shot in the middle of a pandemic, by the time shows do open up, it's all old news. So we figured it, you know, it just, we all kind of decided it was a good way to uh, mm-hmm. get the music out. Cause we're a relatively new band. Um, we've all been in other bands and we've been around the scene for a long time, but this, this uh, lineup and this name has only been around for about two years. So yeah. One year really. Right. before it all really yeah that's, that's true yeah <laughs> well i mean you can definitely see it's been a learning process for a lot of bands i mean like you said somebody put out albums during this time and it's done and forgotten already you know and yeah that's terrible too because you know i mean maybe it's a good thing no okay let me it's not a good thing but maybe a good thing that could come out of this is a lot of bands and a lot of artists have been been able to take this opportunity to nest and write and be creative in a way that they haven't had to, you know, be reduced to like only writing. And cause I mean, you can't really play shows and hell, if you do around here, you're kind of a pariah. So, you know, if, um, or a cover band. <laughs> so, um, so and they, you know that's a, the the market is still open for that. So more power to them. But uh, you know, um, writing music and just just writing to just write, not writing to get it back on, get it out on stage and try it out and all that stuff. We don't have that option. So it's just sort of, you know, it's it's a good way to it's a good time to be creative. So, well, I think too also like our I guess that's about it. A lot of bands, you know, will like that's that's their livelihood you know like if you're not touring if you're not selling stuff like that's that's what you do you know thank thankfully you know we we kind of do this as a a a big passion project i think for all of us um you know we've it's it's all about how much we all just love jamming how much we love writing some good stuff you know but um we're not we're not forced to put anything out we want to put it out because it's it's something good it's something heavy and it's something that we want to be out there. It's not like we need to put this out because we need a paycheck. No, it's, we want to put it out because it's good. We're confident in it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the things that we've been kind of working on and some of the stuff that we have kind of on the back burner right now, um, is, is going to be just as good, if not better, I think, than, um, than caged because we've been able to just take our time with stuff, refine it over a, pretty good period of time and even take this pandemic time to kind of be like you know what this ending could be better this maybe that bridge be does suck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so, so um i think i think we're, we're we're fortunate in that in that case but you know if you, if you have a band that's totally reliant on touring usually they're doing pretty good already you know but um we, we've been able to focus just on what exactly do we want to put out not we have to put something out. And that's that's been kind of liberating, you know. So you guys are actually in a pretty good spot being an up and coming band when you're still able to, you know, you had your job, you're still working. You didn't give everything away because you had to go on tour. You know what I mean? You had to- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. I've read uh, a lot about some, uh, bands that are, you know, that's their livelihood and God, I couldn't imagine, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, and it's, I think it's a timing thing. Cause, uh, you know, God willing, we'd be in that position or would have been. And, you know, to, to, for that all to come crashing down at that moment, it's, yeah. it's insane. You know, you'd be surprised about how many bands that are really famous that actually had to go out and get nine to fives during this time because they have no income coming in. Yeah. And it truly makes me wonder when everything starts back up, like, which bands are actually going to go back out and do it. I mean, somebody might find some being comfortable. They're, they're working. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, somebody, somebody might have, you know, pulling in the same amount per year plus benefits. And they're like, you know what? And I'm, a, I'm, and I'm at home with my family. Like, you know, I, I don't see that being completely out of the, uh, out of the question for some bands, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's only, it hasn't been a few months. It's been a long time and it seems like it's going to be a lot longer, you know? Fortunately, man. Yeah, I think well, it's going to be a year and two weeks. Yep. Yeah, we were just talking about it on a local and a regional scale, like what bands are going to still be around when this all ends. You know, what who are what of our friends that we've played with in the past? Who's still going to be standing after this? And you know, or rebuilding, and you know, it might be new projects, but the same people, you know, same faces. So it's kind of interesting, you know, to think about. 
Now, when you're a newer band during this pandemic, how do you build up your fan base? What, what are you guys doing to go ahead and, and turn people on to you? Besides interviews and shit like this. Yeah, this is actually kind of a new thing for us. We decided, uh, you know, we have our own Facebook pages, you know, our, our own, our Facebook and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, without being spammy, you know, hey, like my band or whatever, we just, uh, you know, we fell into a little bit into the meme side of things and um, <clears throat> just just standard social networking. Um, but we decided to go with uh, with the label group um, mm -hmm. and Song and Denny have actually been really awesome. Uh, we just, just, you know, thought that during this time would be is the right time to build a foundation. So that's pretty much where we're at right now is going from that baseline local level trying to get to the regional you know moving up the the ladder if you will like guitar hero from the basement to the you know to the to the catch only uh beer bars to the venues to you know that's but now there's none of that but that's kind of what we're doing is you know seeing what we can do on the uh on the internet side of things doing interviews and releases and, and stuff like that now, have you done any of those like uh, acoustic jams or anything like that on your social media to uh, turn the fans on you? Oh, like the uh, the live streams and stuff? Mm -hmm. Not really, no. Um, we we probably will. I think we've talked about it a little bit, just live streaming a, a practice uh, and just trying to get the sound right, you know? I think once we've had a few more, uh, you know, practices back together, um, you know, we'll be able to live stream some stuff maybe put some acoustic things or even even just jam sessions together, you know, because uh, like James was saying, we've, we've really only had a couple practices um, here just this last month. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we if we flip some cameras on, you know, here in the coming weeks um, just to kind of get people being like, hey, we're still doing stuff. Um, check this new stuff out, you know. So uh, w w once we get some more time under our belt, I think I think that'll be a lot more likely. Is just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, I'm glad to see the approach that you're taking on it too. I mean, some of these bands, are like, <clears throat> these full-on live streams, are just it's like bullshit. To be honest, man. I mean, it's not cool watching somebody pretend that they're playing in front of somebody. You know, you can tell they're they're not feeling the audience. They're just yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's that. Yeah, there's that give and take, man. You have to have it. Uh, there's a there's a couple really good uh, radio stations down here that are doing um, some some live uh, live stream stuff that we've actually approached and been approached by. So we've got those, you know, penciled in the calendar at some point. Um, and uh, we're totally interested in doing those. Um, you know, we can't wait to actually to to go ahead and take advantage of those. But yeah, I think that. I've noticed that as well. You just, they're standing around and they've even gone to uh, their buddy's bar and have the whole lights and everything. So, cause since there's nobody's in there, they can use the stage right. and it still just looks like they're not feeding off of anything, you know, they're just, you know, yeah. mm, it's, it's like 60%. And that's great. You know, at least they're still playing the music and they're getting it out there and people are, people are putting comments on there and everything. And that's, that's amazing to see that there's still a breath <laughs> in the, in the, in the people that want it. You know, but uh, yeah, I mean, we've all play we've played shows where there's five people, you know, <laughs> and it feels yeah. like there's five people right, right here. But then when you play to, you know, 40, it's, it's like, well, this is pretty cool. It's growing up. So even, I think even that just a small show would be amazing once we're able to, to have those, but yeah, doing live streams with nobody, but still trying to put on the stage show, like there's everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think, I think doing it in a band practice setting. Here's our rehearsal space. This is you know it's a it's a literally a fucking wood slat garage. Can I cuss? I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's literally just a garage. You know that might actually have a its own aesthetic to it. That might be something that's like, all right, cool. This is where these guys are rehearsing at. This is where they're you know coming up with stuff instead of a faux stage you know environment. And I think too, um, like social media has really helped out with that. Um, just cause if you are going to record something, um, yeah, it's cool to be able to watch a band on the live stream and stuff, but then that video stays there. So if somebody wants to watch later, you might get a fan an hour after your, um, after your live stream, you know? Um, whereas if it was just like, Hey, you get one shot when we're playing live and that's it, you know, you might lose some people. So I think that's, that's helped out a lot. Um, 
and also some some radio stations you know uh that we've been sending our stuff to have been getting us out there too like um we had this goodness gracious who was it 98.9 in uh jacksonville like they played our stuff and did like a whole review on us you know so i'm sure that got us some more uh likes and fans or at least a little bit of attention you know kind of out east of here um so i'm really glad that radio stations and places like iHeartRadio, you know like the the online radio stuff right. i'm glad they're still doing things because you can still send your stuff out to them and you know that could take place of a show and that could get somebody's attention who may have seen you otherwise uh so it's, it's been about a lot, a lot of online stuff so what, what's Florida right now? What's that like? I mean, are people starting to do shows and stuff there? Or? Uh, not, um, <laughs> not in our market. No, um, there are cover bands and there are cover shows at their at your beach bars because the tourism, you know, uh, strips are still pretty much as alive as they can be. Um, but uh, you know, as far as you know, local um, hard rock metal shows, it's it's still dead zero. I know that just a little bit east, uh, just a little bit west of them. And, uh, you know, Biloxi, Gulfport, Mississippi, and all that stuff, they're starting to have some shows. I've seen live streams at, sh at shows, and I'm like, wow, that's awesome, you know? But right now, our numbers are still really high. So they have gone down a little bit, but they are still pretty high. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I see people doing full-on tours of Texas because that's, like, one of the few places that let venues do stuff. Right. Before they froze over, so we're not going back. Yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll probably take some stuff out of the out of the availability for shows there. Yeah, man, I'm in New York. You can't do shit here. I mean, uh, I think they, they just started letting restaurants back open, so concerts are a while away, you know what I mean? Yep. So people want to follow up. They want to know more about you guys. Uh, where do they go? What do they do? <laughs> uh yeah the, the, uh, facebook uh facebook is our main spot we got an inst we have an instagram and um i think that pretty much for those through those two i mean if we have something come out on youtube it's going to be there if we have something come out uh elsewhere of, uh, from your page is gonna you know once this goes up that'll be shared um um on our page and hopefully get some traffic to to, to that as well so i mean really facebook and instagram are our two you know forefront any other thing that gets that gets uh, put out will be shared or or linked to those anyway so awesome well yeah. that's it man uh, today is going to be the premiere and it was an amazing song i really can't wait to see what comes next out of you guys and uh i know you guys are going to do something big once the world opens back up thank you so much so, that's that's definitely the plan you know just yeah. to keep on putting stuff out and once it's all opened up we can have something to look back on and something to put you know to put out there for everyone and hopefully yeah. get on a, get on a stage right. that's where it's all that's what it's all about we got to get on a stage when it's time and it's going to be beautiful yep yeah man that's what the world needs i mean this is that's what i did for for a living was you know i went to concerts for a living I took photos i interviewed bands <laughs> I was right if it wasn't for these Zoom things, man, I'd be going crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'd love to meet you in person sometime. Absolutely. I mean, I know for a fact that uh, once you guys are out and about, you'll definitely hit up my, my neck of the woods from New York. So uh, can't wait. You know, sit back, have a beer, and uh, shoot the shit. Yeah, we wouldn't mind getting up there, man. You know, so. definitely, man. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Thank you for being on the show, and uh, I can't wait to see what's next. Sounds Thank good. You. Thanks for your time.